Barbenheimer. Barbie and Oppenheimer. He barbed in my Heimer. What does that mean? I don't know. Here's a double review. I gotta say, the energy going into both those films were absolutely immaculate. The whole building was more packed than I had seen in a long time. It was really cool just seeing everyone in their different outfits. Of course, me and my friends are dressed up, but there was a group of guys who were all wearing full piece suits. There was this group of like five girls who all wore fairy dresses. Shout out to this one kid who showed up in a pink cowboy hat and boots. I was also really appreciative that both theaters were packed for the event. It'll be good for ticket sales, but my personal experience is another thing. There obviously were a lot of kids who went to Oppenheimer for the meme, but because of that, you have a bunch of kids in the theater for this free hour long slow biopic. I swear, in the circumference surrounding me and my friends, there was at least five people who were all on Snapchat. I am like 80% sure that one of those kids was recording when Florence Pugh had her hits out. I'm very glad that both of these films are doing well, but between this double feature and my experience watching Spider-Verse, my conclusion is, I don't like kids, I don't like being a feeder with kids, and I'm gonna stick to my matinees, thank you very much. But enough about my audience, let's talk about the actual movies. I'll review them in the order I saw them in, so let's start with Barben- <laughs> I swear this man's last name is just Barbenheimer now. I saw Oppenheimer. We're going to review Oppenheimer first. If I were to describe Oppenheimer, It'd be Christopher Nolan being his Christopher Noliness. There's lots of playing around with time, visual spectacle, and dramatic buildup. I love Cecilia Murphy as an actor, and I think he did a great job. The cinematography for it was beautiful, and that score, mwah! Chef's kiss, perfect. I love how the bomb was depicted as almost a Lovecraftian being. You never really see it as a mushroom cloud, only up close as it ignites. Seeing the recreations of the atoms and the smoke with the soundtrack playing in the background makes a very haunting experience. Also, Florence was in it, and I quite liked her character. Congrats, Flo. I'm glad you got two major blockbusters coming out this year. This is definitely going to help shake off Don't Worry Darling. I believe that everything technical about the movie is almost perfect, but unfortunately I can't say the same about the story. Personally, I found the pacing in the middle of the film to be slow. This is because of the scenes where they were making the bomb. The payoff is fantastic, but getting there was a slog. Like, you'll have a scene where it they test out a smaller version of it, and there'll be a bunch of people in a room discussing how they should alter the bomb. My next issue is personal, but I found it hard to keep track of all the different characters. Mind you, this film has a lot of different physicists, which is a field I know nothing about. And you're also going back and forth in time. So when you have 10 guys with 5 lines each, and a big part of the story is figuring out which one's a communist, it's kind of hard to keep track of who's talking about who. It's so funny because this film's cast is stacked, but you'll have some people who just show up for like three minutes and that's it. I remember everyone being so hyped when Roderick was going to be in the film. I swear, he has like three lines, froze up, and then that's it for him. You never see him again. Basically, this film is so dense with characters and plot lines that it feels almost a little bit overwhelming. Plus, while I enjoy most of Nolan's films, he's never been much of a character writer. And for my personal enjoyment of films, characters add a lot to that. That's why The Prestige is my favorite of Nolan's movies. Also, speaking of cameos, I found the way they included real-world historical figures to be quite funny. At some points, it kind of felt like a Marvel movie with how they name drop. Oh my gosh, it's Werner Heisenberg. Oh my gosh, it's Albert Einstein. He doesn't like this guy for some reason. Oh my gosh, it's JFK. They name drop JFK. I can't wait for the MTV animated spin-off of JFK. One worry I saw about the film before it was released was how much accountability Robert would have for the atomic bomb. They didn't outright show the devastation, but I believe Nolan depicted the horror of this creation very well. It might not have been in the way people wanted it to, but that's because of the perspective the film is written in. The whole film is centered around his experience, and we see himself realize the horror of what he's created, with most of the film being from his perspective. The screenplay is even written in first person. That means we're not going to see a lot of accountability. You only see other scientists arguing about the ethics of the bomb when Oppenheimer walks in on them talking about it. But if you want a Japanese perspective on the atomic bomb, there are a lot of fantastic Japanese filmmakers who've handled the subject. Personally, I'm planning on watching Barefoot Gen this week. There are multiple versions uploaded on YouTube, so it's very easy to find. Overall, Oppenheimer is a film I enjoyed, but don't have a desire to see for a while. I find that most of Nolan's recent films have been experiences best suited for theaters, and Oppie's no exception. So if you're interested in seeing it, go to an IMAX before it leaves. Just remember to bring snacks for the Trinity scenes. So of course, now that Oppenheimer's done, it's time to talk about Barbie. 
This is a film where even though it had a lot of highs for me, I found the script ruined my overall experience. Barbie was actually my most anticipated film of the summer. I was very much a Barbie girl, living in a Barbie world when I was a kid. So when I saw the trailers and all the references to the old Barbies, I got super excited. But hey, don't worry. It wasn't just memory berries that was keeping me interested. I loved the tone of comedy that the trailers were displaying, and the set and costume design looked fantastic. While the whole experience didn't live up to my expectations, the technical stuff did. The whole design of Barbie Land is fantastic. I love that you can tell that Greta used to play with Barbies as a kid, adding the details like there being no walls, Barbie not needing stairs, and the cars driving on their own. It's funny, the cartoony look of this world reminded me of the live-action cat in the hat. Of course, without it being a hellish landscape. Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling both nailed their roles. I haven't seen The Nice Guys, so this is my first time seeing Ryan Gosling in a comedy, and he's fantastic. I 100% believe that there were no thoughts going through this man's head. I found some of the jokes about Barbie history to be quite repetitive, however. This film has a lot of references to discontinued Barbies, but I found the references to be too on the nose. This is because the narrator or another Barbie will say what the doll's name is, and then explain the controversy surrounding the doll. This is Midge. She was discontinued because pregnant women are weird. This is grown-up Skipper. She's weird because she has boobs. It would be like if in a Marvel movie, a hero would say a character's name, except they continue after that, saying their power and their origin story. I do understand, however, that Barbie was a special interest of mine growing up, so I know this history more than the average person. Though, I have to say one thing. Greta Gerwig, Noah Baumbach, you are cowards. How dare you not let Nightclub Ken keep his cock ring? That was the most iconic part about him. That was the whole reason why he was discontinued, and you removed it from his character design. I'm hosting a boycott right now. Hashtag unblock the cock. The blatantness also didn't stop there. I would say it's my main problem with the movie. The film doesn't seem to have confidence that the audience will understand its messages. Now this involves me getting into spoilers, so if you don't want that, skip this part of the video. But due to how late it's taking me to get this out, I'm assuming you've all probably watched it. I'm okay with Ken taking over Barbie Land and introducing patriarchy. It makes sense considering he has the mind of a child. It's the serious moments that I have a problem with. I enjoyed America Ferreira's speech when it first started, but I found it went for way too long. I don't like the word preachy because of how it's used online, but that was my first thought when listening. And the main reason has to do with how long it goes for, and the fact that I would just cut to people slowly nodding. But one thing I have to remind myself is that while these are ideas I have personally heard, some women have not had these frustrations personally laid out to them like this before. For example, the girl I used to go to high school with. She found the commentary to be really weird. It surprised her that Barbie would want Mattel run by a woman, because she has never personally heard of any women in authoritarian roles. I know a good chunk of this probably has to do with the fact that the church she goes to doesn't allow women in their board of elders. So when I watch a scene like this and I don't like the bluntness, I try to think about the members of the audience who haven't heard of these concepts before. A less personal problem I had, though, was the pacing of the film. It bothered me that they spent the first act emphasizing the importance of Barbie's connection to her owner, but once she finds out that Gloria was the one feeling sad, that plotline is forgotten. The film's focus quickly turns to Ken's takeover of Barbie Land. Honestly, now that I think about it, the humans were completely sidelined. Sasha didn't affect the plot at all. She was only there for the bait and switch at the beginning. If Gloria and Barbie left her in the real world for the third act, nothing would change. The same thing can be said about Mattel CEOs. They feel like they were in the script just so there's a reason why Ken goes back to Barbie Land first. Imagine if we took out the two chase scenes and replaced them with ones fleshing out Gloria and Sasha's relationship. And then we could actually show why Sasha comes around to Barbie dolls in the end. Because with how the movie's written, she just kind of lightens up after her trip to Barbie Land. Well, I think there were a couple points that made the script feel clunky. But apparently stereotypical Barbie was the only Barbie who ever had an owner who was sad. Let me tell you, as someone who used to be a neurodivergent 10 year old, half of those Barbies would be extremely anxious and depressed. So I didn't completely love this film. I thought it was funny and I had a very good time at, at the theater. But much like its release date twin, I'm not planning on seeing it again anytime soon. So here's my conclusion. I was a little disappointed with both films by not loving either of them, but I'm so glad Barbenheimer happened. What I also love about this is that it's Barbenheimer. Barbie and Oppenheimer. They're not pitted against each other. It's just two really anticipated films that people are both hoping to do well. And they've had. I would hope with all the box office bombs of this year, and Barb and Harbinger being such a massive event, that that would encourage better writing in Hollywood. But with the actors and writer strikes happening right now, I assume this is going to be a very short celebration. But that won't negate the great time I had with my friends, and you probably had with yours. There's one thing I'll also say. 
to quote the great words of Harry Styles, what's great about these movies is that they felt like movies. Okay, but I, am, I actually am being serious right now. Both of these films have a lot of practical effects. It's very obvious there was a lot of passion and love put into these projects. Anyway, yeah, I'll just end the video right now. Thanks for watching. This is my first time doing two short reviews. Subscribe to my channel, I'm hoping to get another video out this month. And I'll see you guys all next time.